Hey guys, Jill here from Ask a Vet Tech. Today we're going to be talking about mites in chickens. I'll be teaching you today about the most common mite, the red poultry mite in chickens. We're going to learn about where they come from, how you find them, and find out if you have them, how to treat them, and how to prevent them. First off, what is a mite? A blood feeding ectoparasite that is slow moving. It is about one millimeter long and about 0.5 to 0.7 millimeters wide. They feed on the blood of your chickens as your chicken is sleeping, roosted up on their perch at night. They create a lot of issues for chickens, not just the irritation of them pecking and scratching and irritating the skin. They actually drink the blood of the chicken, which weakens the chicken's immune system and the chicken itself. So where the heck do mites come from anyway? How do my chicken get mites? The answer is nature. In nature, there are mites and there are other hosts that hold on to these mites and then share them with others. Wild birds are the most common host for the red poultry mite to be shared with your flock. So feeding your backyard birds is kind of where they come from, but I love my birds and I'm never going to stop feeding my wild birds, so I'm just going to have to watch for and treat and prevent the mites. Birds are birds and they're going to look for and eat any food that they can find, whether it is from their fancy bird feeder or from the flock's food dish. And if your chickens are like mine, they're pretty messy. They make a lot of waste from their food and they scratch it through a little container, leaving little tiny bits of chicken feed all over the ground. Well, as a bird flying over, that's an easy meal. So they drop down, they have a snack, drop off a mite or two, and then they're out of here. Haley wanted to say hi, guys. Can you say hi? You gonna step all over me? It's all it takes is a couple red mites for your flock to, wow, Haley, ow, you're really hurting me. Unless you're preventing against the mites to come into your flock, that is a really great way for them to come in and take over. If your chickens are free range, there's even a higher risk of them picking up red mites because they're going to wander all over the yard. Anywhere that the birds have been, they can also kind of, you know, share other yucky stuff with your chickens. Now that I'm saying that it's a bad idea to free range your chickens because, well, I do it every single day. That being said, I just need to take the precautions ahead of time to make sure that my flock is safe. How are we going to find these mites to begin with? How do we even know if we have them? The most common place to find a red poultry mite is along the roost where the chicken sits and sleeps all night long. The mite is at their least risk if they hide and burrow into those little cracks and crevices where we can't see them. Another place we will find them is on the eggs. After the chicken has laid an egg, there is a bloom that comes out. And if they have mites, a lot of times those mites will stick right to that bloom at the same time that they're laying the eggs. So you might see little tiny specks upon the eggs. The next place you'd find them is on the bird itself. So when you're doing a flock inspection, checking over the head, the neck, under the wings, around the vent area, and around the thighs to see if you see any little specks. So how quickly can the mite grow and then reproduce to create more mites? That's a big question. The female red mites will lay around 30 eggs in her lifetime. She's able to reproduce for about eight weeks in optimal conditions, time between the eggs being laid by the female, molting several times to become a mature mite and being able to reproduce in as short as a week. Poultry mites are great survivors. They don't wanna die. They can live in an environment for up to nine months with no food. The populations grow the best and the fastest between 77 degrees to 95 degrees Fahrenheit with a humidity level between 70 and 90 percent. So that being said, on those hot, humid days, those are the days that they're reproducing the most and the quickest. If you found value in this video so far or you know someone who would, could you please hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the share button and share it off with a friend. It helps me out a lot and it costs you nothing. If you are interested in supporting this channel further, I do offer memberships which you can find below in the community area. 
but know that if your temperature in your coop gets up to 113 degrees Fahrenheit, it will kill all the mites. So that being said, don't leave your chickens in the coop, but if you could let them out for a day, lock up your coop, make it hot in there as hot as you can, leave the windows closed, the doors closed, get it as hot as can be in there. If it gets up to 113 degrees, all those mites will die. Also, negative four degrees Fahrenheit is also lethal. So if you live in Michigan like me, it might be really helpful to have a negative four degree day. <laughs> now you're like, okay, I, I'm scared of mites. Let's figure out if I have them, right? There's a super easy way to do this. And it just takes like one to two nights to figure out if you have mites, if you can't physically see them. Go get yourself a roll of that blue painter's tape. Here's a picture of it. Then I'm gonna have you go in your coop and on the roost where the chickens rest each night, Along the roosting bars, you can wrap some painter's tape around those. You stay in there. You've been naughty lately. You need to stay in there and lay your eggs, Missy. Ah, get in there. We've had some issues with her running off and not laying her eggs where she's supposed to. So she is quarantined to the coop at this very moment. Anyway, back to the painter's tape. If you take painter's tape and you wrap it backwards so the sticky side is out along some of those roosting bars, and then you look at it just in like one chunk like this. You want to do that so that you can count how many mites are on that. If you see mites, you should probably treat. If you don't see mites, that's amazing. Great job. If you have mites, it's not that big a deal. We're going to get them taken care of. The other way you could do this is to get yourself a piece of PVC pipe about yay long. I know that's a, that's an accurate measurement. You get that, get a piece of dowel rod. You can get that at like your local craft store. Joann's, Walmart sells it. Um, it's just like a thin brown rod. And then you zip strip it to the coop roosting bar. And what that does is it gives those little mites a little hidey hole to go in there. It's called a rick stick. The rick stick is a, about a one inch piece of PVC pipe. And then you take a dowel rod that fits inside of it. You put the things on the underside of your roost, zip strip it to it and leave it for a couple days. Then a couple days are up you go out and you pull out the dowel rod and you look on there to see if you have any mites on the dowel rod if you do one to two is a low to moderate infestation but if you see more than three you better be treating your coop because you know it just keeps going three times 30 times you know however many other mites are still there that you didn't see that can become a huge infestation in a very short time especially if the humidity and the temperature are just right like it is here in michigan right now So there's some treatments that you can use. Some people have used dust. It's a permethrin dust that you can get at your farm store. I'll put a, a picture of one right here and a link to Amazon if I can. You apply that directly to the bird. Use about one tablespoon per bird. You kind of dust it over top of the bird, making sure that you get under the wings, both wings, along the thighs, the breast, the vent area, the tail feathers. Just basically coat the bird everything but the head. But you want it to go onto the skin, not just the feathers. So it's important if you're using this product to wear gloves for yourself, long sleeves, long pants, and a, a mask because you don't want to be breathing that stuff in. Once you get your chicken treated, you can let them go inside or outside the coop. It doesn't really matter because it's on them. Do not put it on eggs and do not put it in their food or their water. So if you're going to be treating inside the coop and you have those things in there, you need to remove them before you treat. If you apply it to the nesting box and it is hard for them to breathe in there in any way, like if it's covered or closed in, you're going to cause a respiratory issue for your bird. Elector PSP is a great product. It's a spinosad and it is kind of a high concentrate. If you can get your hands on some of that stuff, mix up enough to be able to treat your entire flock and your coop. The dilution is two and a half teaspoons to one gallon of water. That is enough to treat a hundred square foot coop. You treat the cracks, the crevices, and any place in between, and you can treat the bird. Wear long sleeves and please let it dry before, you know, doing anything else. There is a permethrin spray that you can get at like Tractor Supply and Farm and Home and those kind of places that is pre-mixed and ready to rip. And you can use that on your birds and on your coop. Um, make sure that you double check that there's no egg withhold on that though. You can also add diatomaceous earth, which what is diatomaceous earth? Nobody really knows. Let's talk about it. Diatomaceous earth is actually a natural occurring soft silica sedimentary rock which is crumbled up and it turns into an off-white powder. 
There's tiny remains of aquatic organisms called diatoms. Their skeletons are made of silica, and the silica actually absorbs the oils and fats from the outside of the mites, and then it dries them out and makes them like susceptible to being scraped and, and gouged and things like that. Then the sharp edges are abrasive on, in the diatomaceous earth, and it cuts the exoskeleton of the mite, which kills them. So it is super important if you're not using diatomaceous earth to get on the bandwagon, put it in your dusting bath and all that because it works so well to prevent mites. The application of diatomaceous earth will need to be increased if the humidity is high. So if you're putting it in today and it's super humid tomorrow, the, the next day do some more. Like you just, you just need to stay on top of the diatomaceous earth. It is a cheap preventative, so please use it in your coop. How do I know that they're affecting my flock? I mean, like they're mites and they obviously have been around for years. So like, why do I need to treat for them? You're gonna start to see signs and symptoms in your chickens. One is gonna be a dirty vent. The backside of them is gonna be dirty and gross and nasty because they are fighting off something that is eating on them, literally eating their blood. Their egg production is gonna be way down and you're gonna notice that because you're gonna be like, what the heck, I've got 19 eggs yesterday and today I've got 10. And then the next day you've got six and it just keeps going down. You may find pin-sized bites on the comb and the waddles, a rash on the body under the feathers. Just remember this, most importantly, they feed on the blood of your chicken. So your chicken's only this big. If it takes too much of its blood, it's going to die. This, this mite can kill your chickens. When treating for mites, it's important to stay on top of flock inspection. Monitor the dust baths and keep new diatomaceous earth added in every week as a prevention. I made an entire video to help you helping your flock get through molting. You can go ahead and click into that video right here and right now. I'll see you in the next video. And remember, I'm here for you. You're here for your pet. Have a great day.